Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Soldiering On Awards patron, Earl Howe, Deputy Leader of the House of Lords, and also our President, General the Lord Dannett, it is my great privilege to welcome you to the Soldiering On Awards 2020 Livestream Celebration event. My name is Richard Nugy, and we are broadcasting live from the BFBS studio in Chalfont St. Peter. This live stream event concludes a series of private virtual ceremonies where we have unveiled the winners of 12 different categories. Now, for very obvious reasons this year, we have had to change the format of our event. This we did with some trepidation, as we are all quite new to the digital event space. Happily, though, I can report it has been a unique and an enriching experience, making the very best of the situation we find ourselves in. Tonight, we celebrate all of the finalists and winners for 2020 before revealing the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award. I don't know who that is, and I'm really looking forward to finding out who wins tonight. For those of you who have not come across us before, the Soldiering On Awards recognise and celebrate the outstanding achievements of our diverse range of groups and individuals who work together in support of the Armed Forces community. Soldiering On Awards is now a brand of X-Forces Enterprises, of which I am very proud to be the patron. The 2020 awards mark Soldiering On's 10th anniversary. During those 10 years, over 100 winners, teams, charities, government departments, businesses, and even animal partners across a wide range of categories, along with countless more finalists, have been recognised for their outstanding contribution to the military community. As nominations for next year will be opening just in a few months, I invite you to be inspired as you watch this next hour of celebration and think through about who you can nominate for next year. There will be many out there who, who you can. Perhaps to fi finish, you will allow me to repeat something I said earlier. If you do extraordinary things for others often enough, you yourself become extraordinary. Now settle in, raise a glass with us as we celebrate a range of simply incredible people and teams across the military community doing those extraordinary things. And let's start by looking back at the finalist reception in the House of Lords this last February. What is this thing? What are the Soldiering Honour Awards? Why, why, why are we all here? In terms of bringing the business community, the military community, the Ministry of Defence and the charitable sector together, I think X-Forces and the Soldiering On are leading the way on that charge. It's not just about the finalists, because in anything like this, you need people to nominate them. So you need the people to have the grace and good heart to say, I think somebody else is fabulous and put them forward. There's no rank, there's no, no title. Everybody loves animals and, and I suppose that's something that we want to embrace. Well, we're, we're celebrating perhaps those who have um, gone a little further, uh, those who have made a difference but perhaps didn't even know that they were making the difference that they did, those who've achieved something special. That's what these rewards are about. It actually recognises the good work and the success of those ex-forces personnel who start up businesses on their own. It's always inspiring, it makes you want to go back into work and do more, and get, every, get your teams to do more. And when you read the citations, goodness me, like you're off, well I was off, you know, Richard was sobbing. I think to recognise the sacrifices that our armed forces have given uh, is a way of us giving back. Every single one of you who got here to be as a finalist has been fought for, has been argued over, has been thought about really, really thoroughly. Nobody's been a shoe in So just to be a finalist, trust me, is incredible because we get a lot of entries. And let's be honest, they're all pretty good. It allows the general public to say, thank you. We recognise what you do and we appreciate what you do. Thank you for your service to our nation. Wow. I know it's been said so many times tonight already, but I just wanted to say again how humbling and inspiring it is to be here tonight with so many fantastic finalists. Nobody who has ever recognised on the night, and nobody that's ever there as a finalist, have started this journey with the thought of being recognised or sometimes even thanked. 
that's what makes Soldiering on Awards so incredibly special. What the finalists tonight show you, though, is if you do extraordinary things for others often enough, you yourself become extraordinary. Thank you to General Nuji for opening this evening. What an amazing opening and what a lot we have to live up to tonight. General Nuji is patron of the X-Forces Enterprise and will be back with us later and gave us that really fitting opening here in our North London COVID secure studio. We're at the home of the FBS and I'm a BFBS broadcaster here with you this evening. And alongside me, the co-chair of the Soldiering on Awards and British Army Reservist, Lieutenant Colonel Ren Kapoor, MBE. We're very excited to be here, aren't we? <laughs> We're absolutely delighted to be here. And of course, we've already heard from General Richard Nuji that we've had some private Zooms over the last four weeks. So we're in the fifth week to be here at the studios and everybody, I mean, everybody has had to adapt. So uh, just incredible. And uh, I just want to say a big thank you, a big thank you on behalf of our president, our patron, our team, the finalists, the judges, the nominators, all of them, and including our sponsors. This means a lot to us. Um, so very grateful. Well, we're here now. This is, like you say, the culmination of a number of weeks of, of work and of celebrations that you've been having. We're going to look back on what you've been doing over four different digital ceremonies but they've been announcing winners and celebrating finalists already. You've been doing that, haven't you? We have indeed. So what's happened is over the last four weeks, and, and to be fair, let me just give you a little bit of, just a little bit of background, because we, of course, thought we were going to be meeting all in one place on the 24th of April. That, of course, didn't happen. So we thought, let's push this out as far as we can. So we went for the 2nd of October, and of course, we're still in that situation right now. So we had to regroup as an organization and also our sponsors were fantastic the calls that uh, we made to the sponsors to talk about how shall we do this I'm so pleased that we didn't rush it you know, making our lives very difficult of course doing this over five weeks but what it has meant is that all the finalists have been able to have some time to be recognized properly so uh, it's it's been phenomenal and how nice is it to have an excuse to get dressed up and you know we've got some bubbles next to us we're trying to have a real celebration tonight and and uh, and yeah. do a, a toast to the winners one more of which will be announced tonight the lifetime achievement award is still to come and before we do that we're going to reflect on the winners that we've had announced over those four weeks so if we Rewind, it was right on the 24th of September that you started giving out the awards this year, wasn't it? Absolutely, and it seems like moons ago, but on the 24th of, uh, of September, we had the first of the ceremonies, Jade, and I'd just like to run you through the very first one. So the first one was the Family Values, sponsored by Military Mutual, and we had their chief executive, Lee Mooney, uh, talk about the category and also why it was important to them to sponsor this category in, in, in particular. And we had uh, Chief of Defence, uh, General Swift, who had this golden envelope and the three uh, finalists, give us time, Nikki Scott, founder of Scotty's Little Soldiers and Paula Edwards of Forces Assist. That was the first one. The second category on that first digital ceremony was the Forces in Mind Trust Working Together Award. Now, um, Air Vice Marshal Ray Locke, CBE, whose chief executive introduced that and told us about what it means to the Forces in Mind Trust. And Soldiering on Awards patron Earl Howe was um, the one to give out the gold envelope. He is Deputy Leader of the House of Lords. Most importantly, the finalists in that category, the Working Together Award, were Charmwood, Melton and Rushcliffe Borough Council's partnership, Forces Connect South East and Sussex, Kent and Medway Armed Forces Network team. We'll be finding out in a minute which one of them scooped the award and there was one other category on that evening. There certainly was. Last but not least, we had the Defence Inclusivity Award sponsored by Landmark Support Services. 
and there were three finalists in there as well but it was Tim Sh Shapland um, who uh, opened the proceedings and of course the wonderful Carl Harris and the three finalists were Colonel Leona Barr Jones, Defence Diversity Networks and Regional Command BAME Engagement Team. Fantastic, fantastic finalists, all three. So that first ceremony, you had 50 people on a Zoom webinar <laughs> for it. Was that carnage the first one that you were doing? It was indeed. And, and uh, we sort of said, right, OK, it's so the first one. We don't want to crash the system. So let's, uh, let's just cap that at uh, a, a round number of 50. And actually, it was just the most amazing experience. Um, and to be able to get people to zoom in and, and it was pre-recorded as well. It was just, it was fantastic. It was really, really, really good to do this, particularly at this time when I think we all need to get together a little bit. Exactly. And I hope you can join us in, in raising a glass this evening and maybe you've been dressed up at home while you're watching. Um, but let's take a look back on that first digital ceremony with Fiona Dolman hosting. <laughs> Well, the family values category is very much aligned to our core principles at the Military Mutual. Just a big well done to all of you. Having served uh, for over 30 years and having been married for 22 years and now having been in post as Chief of Defence People for about seven months, I know just how important family is to uh, the service people but also the wider military community. The winner of the Soldiering on Awards 2020 in the Family Values category is Nikki Scott, founder of Scotty's Little School. <laughs> um, it's a, a bit of a shock, um, just really honoured actually, and I speak on behalf of a few bereaved families that sometimes you can feel disconnected um, when you lose someone in the military. And what I love about Scotty's Little Soldiers is it helps to bring that military community back to all the families again. On behalf of the chair and the board of Forces in Mind Trust, uh, we're delighted to sponsor the Working Together category. The winner of the Soldiering On Awards 2020 Working Together category is Sussex, Kent and Medway Armed Forces Network Team. We're just so ecstatic. Um, we've been going for 10 years now, so it's really good reward after those 10 years um, to say thank you to everyone. And we just thoroughly enjoy working with the whole of the Armed Forces community. Landmark's responsibility as a partner of the Armed Forces extends across all of our activities. Sponsoring this Defence Inclusivity Award, it allows us to take this further by establishing a strong network with the individuals who are championing greater diversity and inclusion throughout the Armed Forces community. We're delighted to be joining you for the Soldiering on Awards 2020 and extremely honoured to be announcing the winner of the Defence Inclusivity Awards for this year. I think it's fair to say that we as a society coming together to embrace inclusivity is testament to the progression that we've witnessed through the years in the armed forces. The winner of the Soldiering On Awards 2020 Defence Inclusivity category is Colonel Leona Barr Jones. <laughs> I am completely speechless, I have to say, with obviously, you know, such amazing inclusivity work going on in across the whole of the armed forces, as, as Carl knows. And the Defence Diversity Network, they do the networks they do amazing work across the whole of defence. And I know the work really well of the Regional Command Fame engagement team and I've worked, worked with them myself and I'm just blown away really because they're both fantastic. So thank you so much. Well, we're back and Jade, I did tell you to bring your tissues with you. I hope you remembered. I saw, I saw that little bit of dust in your eyes, actually. It's <laughs> going to be an emotional night and finding out about those winners from your first ceremony. All of the finalists are so deserving, but I think we should, you know, talk a little bit more about those deserving winners that we've Absolutely. just heard about. 
Shall we kick off with the very first one? Yeah, and it's somebody I've heard about before, um, you know, from, from working with BFBS overseas. This is a charity and name that I've heard numerous times for her good work. So it's lovely to see um, that the first award, the Family Values Award, went to Nikki Scott from Scotty's Little Soldiers. Uh, the charity was set up back in 2010 when um, Nikki's husband, Corporal Lee Scott, was killed in action. And the charity aims to help bereaved families in the military community. They've helped 400 children since 2010, which is an amazing achievement. Um, Nikki's own children and many children since then. And they just do such good work and they've had really high praise on social media as well, haven't they? They, they really have. And I must tell you, and I know I've shared this uh, with somebody else previously as well, but when you see somebody from Scotty's Little Soldiers, you can't miss them. They're very distinctive in their black and yellow. And I don't know, everything else just stops. And just for a moment, you just, you're in this sort of space where it's just so humbling. And I know that I'm going to end up using the word <laughs> humbling a lot today. I know I am. So, uh, but yeah, you're right. Piers Morgan, he uh, has uh, really uh, supported some of that social media as well. That's really good. And in particular, the emotional moment for, for that award in that ceremony was who gave it to Nikki, wasn't it? Because it yeah. was handing over the baton from a winner last year and a family that she, she knows all too well, Jamie yeah. and Mandy. Tell me That's about that. That's right. So what happened is that back in January, so before when life was normal, uh, we actually asked um, Mandy, in fact, I asked Mandy first and I said, would you be uh, willing to be our guest of honour. We would love for you and Jamie to be at the awards. And from there it progressed that uh, Jamie was going to co-present um, with Mandy, co-present this award as well. So um, it was just really fantastic to be able to still do that on the Zoom uh, private uh, call as well. And, and just the last bit on that, uh, Mandy was actually working. She literally had to take off she, has, she she works in the nhs take oh, off her wow. uniform get home and there she was both of them just remarkable and we both loved your message on twitter today jamie and mandy thank you very much for that and thank you if you're watching with us on facebook live we've got the lifetime achievement award to come later we're just reflecting on the first digital ceremony where winners were celebrated and the second category and that yeah, night, yeah. That, and the second category was and the winner was sussex and kent medway armed forces network who won the forces in mind working together award forces in mind trust awesome organization now back to the winner they are nhs uh, led organization with members that include the mod police local authorities reservists cadets and charities going for 10 years making sure people with the forces background can access support for physical or mental health this is just just amazing housing or employment welfare or social needs so the whole uh, key turnkey as I would say and lovely Jane Burt received the award on behalf of her team such a great example of the public sector being part of the community being recognized just simply awesome and acknowledging you know the different needs of the armed forces community the veterans community in a local Correct. area you know that's so important isn't it so it absolutely is um again i don't envy the judges at all great finalists all three of them um it's just it's just good to see that the public sector is uh, also recognized yeah yeah and um, the final category on that first night was the defense inclusivity award and that went to colonel leona bart jones she is Colonel Commandant of Essex Army Cadet Force. She um, advocates diversity and inclusion in her role and is a really respected leader in doing so. She's instrumental in founding the National Steering Group's Step Change Diversity and Inclusion Project and um, just likes to enshrine inclusion in everything she does, feeding that into the cadets at a young age and, and ingraining that must be rewarding but really important. Absolutely, and I've uh, had the privilege of actually um, being at a reservist unit and talking to the cadets and the volunteer cadets, and Leona's been there. She gives so much of her time as a volunteer as well. So I've seen her in action. This is like three years ago. So to be able to see this happen as well, totally deserving. 
Brilliant. Um, I mean, all worthy winners. We've got a lot more of them to get through. We've got <laughs> we've got three more ceremonies to look back on this evening we before do. we get round to it and some special messages. We do. And this next uh, video that we have, we have from our president, uh, General the Lord Dannett. And uh, he is simply an incredible man. But there's something about this video. It's a little bit, there's a little bit of fun in it and a little twist. So uh, let's roll with that. Good evening and thank you everyone. Thank you, Jade. Thank you, Ben. Well, it's been a remarkable four weeks celebrating so much great work across the whole community, recognising the achievements of brilliant individuals and teams. And now we've arrived at the finale. And I'm particularly pleased for Nikki, who you've just been hearing about, and the great work she and her team does at Scotty's Little Soldiers. It's a thoroughly well-deserved award. Now, it's my great pleasure and privilege to chair the Soldiering On Awards Independent Judging Panel. There are many activities I'm involved with, but hearing about such wonderful people doing such incredible things is always truly uplifting. And certainly, good news is what we all need right now. I'm ably assisted uh, at the head of the judging panel by my vice chair, Deborah Alcott Tyler, whose day job is to be the chief executive of the Directory of Social Change. And I'm also helped by many other individuals covering diverse backgrounds from right across the military community. Now, the independent judging panel is further supported by 20 category judges who do an amazing job of providing the independent judging panel with the contenders from which we agree the shortlisted finalists. So all of you worthy individuals, worthy winners, worthy finalists, watching and listening this evening, you can be guaranteed that you rightfully deserve the recognition that you are receiving. It's a very difficult job to sort out the finalists and the winners. My personal thanks to all the judges, therefore, many of whom I hope are streaming this event this evening too. Of course, it's not a substitute for meeting for a gala dinner, but I hope you'll all be raising a glass to celebrate the work that's been done. And the details, of course, of all the judges can be found on the Soldiering On Awards website. Now, these awards recognise and acknowledge the enormous efforts and achievements from many people right across the military community. All those people who help and support those in need. Volunteers, charity teams, public servants, social enterprises, veterans themselves, individuals, employees, the wider military community is actually really very diverse. And that help and support manifests itself in actions of kindness, the raising of money, provision of services, tremendous acts of courage or endeavour, and ultimately doing great good to support those who have served, and of course, to support their families. This is the message we are determined to amplify through these awards, and along the way, support their longevity and sustainability to do more in the future. And perhaps these sorts of live streams may even help in the future and enable us to go beyond the four walls of a gala dinner event. I have to say, uh, two weeks ago, when we were doing one of the earlier awards evenings, uh, I was sitting here in my office, uh, in uniform, uh, talking away at a computer when my youngest son put his head into my office, couldn't make out what was going on, sneaked up beside me and took a picture um, on his iPhone and posted it on the Dan Clan family WhatsApp message board with the caption, I think Dad's finally lost it. Uh, the idea of me being here in uniform, um, just talking to a computer, um, was clearly lost on Oliver. But there we are. Um, I'm delighted to have done it, delighted to be here tonight um, supporting this event and supporting all of you as you celebrate your achievements. So finally, to all you nominators, military charities, our sponsors and supporters, everyone engaged during the last six months, everyone engaged in these, this is our 10th anniversary awards process. And of course to Wren and her team at X Forces Enterprise. I would like to give you my thanks to you all for making these socially distanced and remote awards a resounding success. And to our three Lifetime Achievement Award finalists, still waiting for the news, enjoy your evening. Please everyone, continue to spread the word about the impact of the people and organisations that are recognised through the Soldiering On Awards. And of course, don't forget, we're open again for nominations in January 2021. Thank you and enjoy the evening.
a lovely message from Lord Dannett there as we announce the finale of the Soldier Award Awards 2020, an announcement still to come of the Lifetime Achievement Awards. And we've got to say hello to a few people. Apparently lots of Chris and Jets fans are with us on Facebook Live tonight. So thank you very much for joining us. And um, Karen Tracy saying, wishing everyone a lovely night. It's, it is a lovely night. We're here to celebrate lots of winners. We've got uh, more categories to go through, we more do. worthy, uh, worthy nom nominees. And um, the second digital ceremony that you had took place back. Well, we're into October now. We we're are indeed. In September. Yeah. I hope you're not going to ask me for all the dates now. <laughs> no, no, but we, we, but I have <laughs> we know we're into October. It was earlier yes. this month yeah. um, where celebrating another three categories, education, training and development, healthcare and rehabilitation Correct. and the Sporting Excellence Award. So let's take a little look at those. First up was education, training and it development. It was indeed, uh, Jade, and again, some incredible nominations, incredible finalists. So we opened with the education and training development, by, which is sponsored by Capita. And we had uh, Kath, and I'm gonna get this right, Kath, so I hope you're watching, Possumai. Uh, who actually opened up the uh, ceremony and we also had Rear Admiral Jim McLeod Assistant Chief of Defence Staff and who actually had the golden envelope Jade so uh, again it was quite oh, lovely, exciting, exciting moment, exciting we'll moment. To see. it was indeed and the finalists just to have a quick reminder Army Foundation College Harrogate, Lifeworks and Mission Motorsport now I know all three of those organisations and I know how wonderful all three of those organizations are but we also had a little bit of a twist on this one and uh we had a patrons recognition award too so so we're going to get to enjoy a plot twist in that <laughs> one we love a plot twist uh, then it's the healthcare and rehabilitation award that was given out on that ceremony um, that's sponsored by redwood technologies and it was given out by David Richmond, CBE Cabinet Office Director of the of Office of Veterans Affairs. And the finalists in that category were Combat Stress Occupational Therapy Team, Martin Diver and Sapper Support. And one final category as well as the, uh, the Patron Special Recognition Award on that night. Thank you very much, Jade. And the last one in this ceremony uh, was sponsored by Spectra and it's the Sporting Excellence Award. And uh, actually our, our uh, sponsor who came in was Miguel Farras. And in fact, what a wonderful name. And also we had a Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Colonel um, Sue Wright, and actually she's my boss, just saying. So you have to be on your best behavior <laughs> on that. Absolutely. <laughs> and the finalists, James Rose, Jody Jones and Michael Lewis. The host for this ceremony joined on their phone. Um, <laughs> Anthony Cotton loves the armed forces. He does so much for the armed forces, doesn't he? And I think he brought a lot of fun to that evening, right? <laughs> he did indeed. And actually, Anthony is just awesome. Um, so he was there, very relaxed. He'd had, he's got his uh, champagne flute. And I'm going to join this by, the, uh, by my phone. And we're like, <laughs> but it was awesome absolutely great well we'll see if there were any kind of 2020 <laughs> zoom call moments as we reflect on that ceremony <laughs> Capita, obviously, in the way we work with our own staff and in the services we provide, are hugely committed to people, development, education and skills provision. Um, so this was an obvious category for us to sponsor and we are delighted to be sponsoring it. So the winner of the Soldier in Honour Awards 2020 Education, Training and Development category is the <laughs> Army Foundation College, Harrogate. Absolutely fantastic, we're thrilled. But I'm here with a team of you know, 500 people from both civilians and military. I've got wonderful teachers from Pearson TQ, a whole facility management team from uh, ESS, and I've got 150 corporals who are really on that sort of front line of teaching, uh, and they do an absolutely wonderful job. Tonight, we announced the Patrons Special Recognition Award. This individual is renowned for his sharp insight his unwavering commitment to the cause of the community. And that was all before the pandemic came about. His demeanor and presence 
guaranteed that people will listen to him. And during the pandemic, he swapped driving his racing cars for driving ambulances. For the Soldiering On Awards 10th anniversary, the Patron's Special Recognition Award goes to... James Cameron. Thank you very much. When the pandemic hit, um, it, it obviously it changed everybody's lives um, overnight. And one of the things that we really sought to do was how can we empower the veteran audience so that they could make a difference to the national effort during a time of national crisis. To my mind, the healthcare and rehabilitation category goes to the heart of what Soldiering On is all about. So I'm delighted to announce the winner of the Soldiering On uh, Awards 2020 Healthcare and Rehabilitation category is uh, SAPA Support. Yeah, to win, it's fantastic. I know how prestigious these are and it's, uh, it's a real big deal and it helps a little charity like this it gives us a bit more visibility and hopefully we can get access to more veterans and give them as much help as we can. The Sporting Excellence Award honours the person or the team uh, that has overcome challenges, inspired others and demonstrated outstanding achievement in the field of sport. And so I'd like to announce the winner of the Soldiering On Awards 2020 Sporting Excellence category is Jodie Jones. I've just been astounded by your stories. Um, to be selected is just a huge honour, but to, to, to have won, I'm blown away, quite honestly. I just, I, I, I don't have the words. And that is, if you ask any of my choir, the North Holland Militarised Choir, that never happens. <laughs>
um, in, you know, I, I'm absolutely I'm delighted that he had the Patrons Award, so very well deserving. Yeah, really nice for, for him to be singled out for that. Um, there was also healthcare and rehabilitation. A favourite, favourite category of mine. And again, I am so um, grateful to the judges who would have had the hard, hard task on this one. So uh, that was, of course, won by SAPA Support. And let me just tell you a little bit about SAPA Support. So Tim Evers was there to represent the, this in, a charity. SAPA Support is the only 24-7 PTSD helpline staffed by veterans and 999 personnel. This is a phone and social media helpline service providing emotional, physical, financial support to veterans 24-7. Initially um, created to help rural engineers, they quickly adapted and it's across all services. Now, with Tim, what a character, okay? Absolutely, totally. You can just imagine, you know, very smart, absolutely dressed um, uh, to the nines, ready for the Zoom call. And then uh, it says, oh, look, I've got my shorts on. So <laughs> I wonder, you know, it's a thing for COVID, isn't it? Well, this is 2020. You can be business on the top and party on the bottom when you're on a Zoom call, right? <laughs> Certainly was for Tim. <laughs> well done, Tim. I like that a lot. Um, also that evening, really emotional scenes for the final category, which was the Sporting Excellence Award. And that went to Jodie Jones, um, who is so deserving of this. Um, she was diagnosed with stage four bowel cancer and has swum the English Channel since then, raising money for Blesma, involving 2,000 kilometres of training. Um, and that was following seven surgeries and 21 infusions of chemotherapy. She swam the 21 miles unaided in 18 hours and 15 minutes. Yeah, I got that right. And uh, she contended along the way with strong currents, jellyfish and very big ships. <laughs> um, she's a successful businesswoman, a veteran's wife and a mother to two young children, as well as being part of her local military wives choir, which is the North London Military Wives Choir. Hopefully they're here supporting Jodie tonight. And um, her determination encompasses everything it takes to be both a great sporting champion and a vital member of the armed forces community. Pretty wow. special. That moment was, was the, the sort of bit that, that nearly set us both off there, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, if you could see the team behind the scenes, <laughs> um, yeah, um, absolutely. And well done to Jodie. Very, very deserving indeed. Now we have a special message, Ren, which is quite a coup to get next because a very, very busy person mm. being very, very busy, but taking time out of their schedule. Who yeah. have we got? So basically we have General Sir Nick Carter, who's actually out on operations and took the time out to say a big special um, well done to all the finalists and winners and why it's important, especially at a time like this, to recognise all the good work that's happening throughout the armed forces community, whether you're still serving or you are, uh, you're a veteran or a family member. Shall we run into seeing what, what's, what's been said? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Good evening from Afghanistan on the 10th anniversary of the Soldiering On Awards. It is terrific to recognise the achievements of those who serve their country and the wider armed forces community. And you do so in so many different ways. Thank you to everyone who is taking the time and effort to nominate others for their great work. It really does make a difference. Congratulations to all of the finalists across all of the categories. Well done, and I wish you much success in the future. The Lifetime Achievement Award is a really special award, recognising years of tireless commitment to making our lives in uniform much better. Best of luck to the finalists who wait to hear the news later in the show. To Emlyn Fenner, who has done so much for SAFA and for the veteran community. To Harold Payne, who's done so much for military charities and in so doing has helped keep the memory of those who gave their lives during the war still alive. 
and not to mention the Not Forgotten Association, who have made a difference to so many people who are feeling lonely and vulnerable. And of course, a final thank you to Wren and her team at X Forces Enterprise for organising these awards and celebrating success. We should all take great pride in the various forms of service we have given our country. Those who serve to defend it and those volunteers who have been inspired to find their own sense of duty in support of the fabric of our nation. Thank you. Taking the time out to do that message while in Afghanistan, Chief of the Defence Staff with us, General Carter, quite acute to get that, um, and rightly acknowledging how hard the team behind the Soldiering on Awards work as well, and yourself, Wren, um, to celebrate everybody. That's what it's all about, isn't it? It is indeed, and, and um, I'm going to use that word again, humbling. Um, but you know what, we as uh, not just an organisation, but also you know the ecosystem that I talked about before, including our sponsors, we, we didn't go do the easy thing. We actually went and made sure that we wanted to, um, you know, it doesn't matter how hard it was, we're going to do something special. To have that message for the finalists and winners from General Carter is just, um, yeah, gonna get all weepy. <laughs> and I know it's different, um, you know, in a, in a normal year, you'd be in a fancy <laughs> London ceremony, there would probably be military bands and everything. Instead, it's us two in our COVID secure studio at BFBS, but we are making sure to look back on some very worthy winners. One more still to come later this evening, the Lifetime Achievement Award will be announced right here on Facebook Live. And um, we should shout out some of the messages that have been coming in. Alexandra saying, rightfully so, congratulations to everyone involved, which is so true, isn't it? It's what we're saying. It, it's not just about the winners. It's about everybody who's been a finalist Absolutely. or a nominee. Yeah. Yeah. And even the hard work of the nominator who nominated in the first place. So, you know, without them, there wouldn't be the nominee. And without the nominee, there wouldn't be a finalist or a winner. So absolutely. Whoever said that, fantastic. <laughs> and a lot of love as well for um, Jodie as well, who uh, swam the channel and got the Sporting Excellence Award. Jodie, there is a lot of love for you on our Facebook Live, deservedly so. So let's have a little look at the, uh, the third digital ceremony where you celebrated another three awards. Um, Business of the Year categories. There's three different stages, aren't there? What was the first one? Right, so we kicked off with Business of the Year Startup, which was sponsored by GKN Aerospace. And uh, it was Mark Miller, um, a veteran himself, who actually opened those proceedings. And we also had Mike Cherry from the Federation of Small Businesses, who opened the golden envelope. Now, the finalists and incredible finalists, again, I know them all. Again, it would have been so difficult for the judges, but we had Tom Fox with Thoughtify, Heather Saunders, the lovely, beautiful Heather Saunders from Toddle, and Charlie Richards at Tribal Tracks. Then it's the Scale Up Award. So we kind of progress up. Scale Up Award, uh, sponsored by the London Stock Exchange Group. And it was, uh, it was given out by RAF Reservist Air Vice Marshal, Ranald Munro, who had the golden envelope where we found out which of the three finalists won. The three finalists were Geolect Limited, IED Training Solutions Limited, and Thorpe FX Limited. All extremely deserving. We will find out which of them got the envelope in a mo. And there was a third category. There was indeed. So the final category in this ceremony was the Community Impact, and that's sponsored by Cisco. And we had their CTO, uh, Steve Davis, Scott Davis, sorry, uh, who actually introduced that category, and uh, Sir John McCall from Cobzio. Uh, absolutely wonderful organisation. It was lovely to have all of them there. But let's move to who were the finalists. And they were Arbor to Barber, Motivational Preparation College for Training, and Turn to Starboard.
Now, you had double trouble <laughs> presenting this ceremony on Zoom. I don't know how you, um, how you kept them in check, but you had Vicky Michelle MBE from Allo Allo and JJ Chalmers, who you might have been watching this Saturday night on Strictly Come Dancing. And um, a really exciting duo. They, yeah. they bounced off each other, didn't they? They really did. And what we wanted to do is, you know, there is another ceremony now and we wanted another twist. And of course, both of them have presented for Sojourn On Awards independently of each other and we actually as a team thought do you know what it would be really get great to get these two together fantastic chemistry we thought that there would be different genres and yeah it was fantastic oodles of fun and lots of banter let's see what <laughs> happened during that ceremony <laughs> Our first category for the evening is Business of the Year Startup. And the sponsor for this category is JKN Aerospace. And here to represent the category is the fabulous Mark Miller, Director of UK Defence at JKN. And Mark is going to tell us a little bit more about why this award is so important to JKN. Thank you, Mark. On behalf of GKN Aerospace, it is an absolute honour to support this category, Soldier on Awards and, and Exporters Enterprise. Um, the Business of the Year Startup Award recognises a new business that was started by an individual linked with the armed forces who still retains a majority shareholding and therefore control of the venture. This year especially has been a tougher marketplace as we all know for startups and it is clear that the values of the armed forces are a great foundation to best prepare individuals for these sorts of challenges. Well, without any further ado, let me open the envelope. And the winner of the Soldering on Awards 2020 Business of the Year Startup category is Tribal Tracks. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, you know, we weren't expecting it, if I'm honest, but um, yeah, really pleased that I'm sure Gain has been exactly the same. Yeah, it's been overwhelmed, actually. <laughs> <laughs> The Business of the Year Scale-Up Award recognizes a new business that was started by an individual linked with the armed forces. And the winner is IED Training Solutions. Darling, congratulations, Ian Clark. <laughs> yeah, Vicky, thank you so much. It's just an incredible feeling. Uh, I didn't expect, just like the last uh, award winner, we, we didn't expect it, but uh, thank you. The Community Impact Award is especially close to Cisco's core values and ethos, where we strive to support many different communities, uh, including veterans. The winner of the Soldering on Awards 2020 Business of the Year Community Impact category is Turn to Starboard. Congratulations, Congratulations Jane Higgins from Turn to Starboard. How fabulous. How are you feeling at the moment? Um, well, I would just like to say that, um, you know, we're uh, hugely honoured that, that I'm here on behalf of Sean Pascoe, who sadly can't join us this evening. Um, but uh, it's hugely humbling uh, to be uh, recognised uh, for his work in this way and all that he has been through um, to create Turn to Starboard and the charity that it is and the support that it, it offers to military veterans who have suffered as a result of their service. So. Thank you all, really. It's uh, hugely humbling. Well, how fantastic was that? And uh, again, just incredible in terms of all the individuals that were cited there. But of course, there's Vicky Michelle, who just is a star, but we had JJ too. And of course, he's on Strictly. So we have to vote for vote for JJ. Yeah, we have to say vote for JJ this, uh, <laughs> this Saturday night, don't we? Um, he is on Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> Vicky's back with us in a moment with, an, yes, with a special you. dedicated message for tonight. And um, we still have the Lifetime Achievement Award to come, which will be um, which will be announced on this live stream here this evening. Um, thank you for your kind comments on the Facebook Live. You can get involved. You can 
drop a message on there if you're watching. And we're just going to talk a little bit about those winners from that, yeah. that third ceremony. So the first up winner of Business of the Year Startup Award was Tribal Tracks Limited. Tribal Tracks is an adventure travel company that organizes inspirational, socially and culturally responsible adventures to provide teams with incredible opportunities. And when we were doing the rehearsals earlier, Jade said she wants to go and work with them. I'm just putting it out there. Can I just say, I'm not <laughs> planning to leave the FBS. I said, if it all fell through in this job, I'd love to work right, with a company like Tribal Tracks. <laughs> it's not gonna fall through, so you won't be able to go. <laughs> so, but we might be able to do a trip together. How about that, hey? Tribal Tracks, if you will have us, I'd yep. love to come on one of your adventures. They sound amazing. <laughs> so Charlie Richards is an ex-army officer in the Royal Logistics Corps who wanted to use her skills in the travel industry to provide people with amazing uh, experiences across the globe. Uh, sorry, Jade, for doing that, <laughs> but I, I said I was going to do that in the rehearsal, so I'm I know, naughty. I know, I had to get dogged in. I really do love my job with the FBS, and it has taken me travelling lots of places. Um, but that was that was genuinely why I liked it, because a lot of the places they go on adventures, I've sort of got to dip my toe in those places from, yeah. from being overseas. I'd love to go. FBS. Right, I'm, yeah. I'm there too. Yeah, OK, well, we're going <laughs> when we can. Um, I, and the second award that was on that evening, let's have a look at that. The um, Business of the Year Scale Up Award, and that went to IED Training Solutions Limited. And it was set up in 2015 by two former Royal Marine senior NCOs, Ian Clark and Paul Barrett. And they have an incredible relationship. Both were serving in 2009 when Paul suffered the ultimate workplace injury. He stepped on an improvised explosive device, an IED. And it was Ian who was responsible for calling the helicopter that saved Paul's life. They now run this business together and you also had a really special yeah. moment on that evening where we did. it turned out that JJ as a host had a relationship with them as well. Yeah, and uh, I wasn't aware of that. Nobody was aware of that until actually JJ mentioned that Ian had supported him so through his injuries. So to be able to have that, which was a live Zoom um, uh, ceremony, what, how much serendipity can you have in just one awards, you know? Yeah. You know, so, but that is just incredible. How wonderful is this community? Uh, it's where you find out that it is possible to get goosebumps in mass yeah. dress, I imagine. <laughs> so so true. Too warm. So true. Um, and the last up business of the year category was? And the last, uh, last up was the winner of the Business uh, Community Impact Award, of course, was Turn to Starboard. Turn to Starboard, a forces sailing charity using therapeutic benefits of sailing to support service personnel who have been affected by military operations. Its founder, Sean Pascoe, who's an incredible man, I've heard so much about him, who served in the RAF for 16 years before discovering the benefits of sailing whilst recovering from PTSD. Sean's determination to share his love of sailing and change veterans' lives has helped thousands of people since he set up Turn to Starboard in 2012. And we have one more really special message for you from Vicky Michelle, who was the host of this awards, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely, we do. And uh, actually, Vicky rang me before, whilst I was on, on route to VFBS. She's just such a wonderful person. And Vicky, I'm going to read this verbatim. Vicky absolutely wanted to share some words tonight. So lo and behold, Vicky is back here tonight and listen very carefully because she will only say this once. <laughs> Off we go. Hello, hello everyone. Vicky Michelle here. I just wanted to say a huge congratulations to all the winners and finalists of this year's awards. I'm honoured to be part of the Soldering On Awards. I've been there since the beginning and I became an ambassador in 2015. And it never fails to amaze me all the heroic and inspirational things our armed forces community do. It truly is humbling. And this year was no different. I had the honor of uh, hosting a virtual ceremony with JJ Chalmers, who was absolutely brilliant and lovely to work with. And as far as I'm concerned, all of you were winners. Uh, I, I, I would not want to be a judge because you have such inspirational and amazing stories.
but I'm so looking forward to next year in 2021 when I can meet you all in person and have a drink. Cheers. The beautiful Vicky Michelle with that message uh, for us, especially for tonight, for the finale of the Soldiering On Awards 2020. And we are here in our studios at BFBS. We have the very exciting announcement of the Lifetime Achievement Award still to come. It's actually not very far away now. We're just mm -hmm. looking back on one more digital ceremony that was hosted to celebrate winners and this was only back last week fresh in your memory Ren. absolutely and we actually kicked off with the first one uh, with the inspiration award sponsored by nat west and i've got to do a shout out to julie baker because she is just a phenomenal woman and of course there was also owen lawrence as well from nat west who joined uh, that ceremony but we ha also had and I'm, I'm sorry I'm gonna have to tell you this we also had the golden envelope was actually opened by Helen Halliwell from the MOD it didn't and quite go to plan though did it <laughs> it was perfect <laughs> for a Covid uh, moment because she had to announce it three times her internet kept crashing out and then she actually got the, when she when she was back live she said I told the kids not to keep using the Wi-Fi. <laughs> so we got all of that. It sounds almost like 1990 rather than 2020. Get off it the was phone, perfect. I need the internet. It was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, so we had the three finalists from there, which were Nikki Scott, Lee Spencer, Sally Orange. We will find out who whose name was in the golden envelope in a moment. Um, then we had the first of the public vote categories and there were an awful lot of, uh, of votes in the public votes. Uh, we'll, we'll get to how many people um, got involved in this. And I know a lot of fans of one of these are on with us today. The Animal Partnership Award, which is sponsored by Pets at Home. And uh, Gav Patton, who is the Army Sergeant Major, he was there to open the golden envelope with four finalists in that category, open to the public vote. Barry and Bella, battling on animals and staff, Chris and Jet and Stable Lives. Those were the four finalists in that category. Indeed, indeed. And then we had, uh, lastly, in this ceremony, we had the People's Choice, which was uh, generously sponsored by Oracle. And we had Duncan Bruce OBE, he's a veteran himself, um, that uh, was on that call. And the wonderful, uh, Mr. Glenn Horton, who pretty much everybody knows. Uh, so it was wonderful to have him open the golden envelope. The uh, finalists in this category, Hector Duff, Matthew Almer, Richard and Dawn Woodhouse, and the lovely Colonel Deborah Taylor. Now, I just wanted to share some stats with you, if that's okay. The public votes went huge didn't they they did indeed we had a phenomenal amount and i know we said this before last year we had an increase this year we had an even more increase so i think it was up from last year was up again 38 percent but we had just to give you the numbers on that we had 5789 people vote uh, for the people's choice and we had 6532 for the animal partnership incredible there was a lot riding on it then a lot of people wanted to know whose name was in the golden envelope after casting their vote so let's see what happened in the ceremony which was hosted by john nickel raf veteran and best-selling author <laughs> NatWest is honoured to be supporting the 10th anniversary of the 2020 Soldiering On Awards in recognising truly inspirational people and teams, profiling the outstanding achievements of current and former servicemen and women, their families, and all those who support the armed forces community. So the winner the is, is Sally us. Orange. Oh. Representing Sally this evening is her sister, Clay. Clay, what do you think Sally's going to make uh, of winning this award this evening? She'll be gutted that she's not um, here today, um, but unfortunately she's not well and she wanted me to be open that she's struggling with her own mental health at the moment. Um, so this will be an amazing boost to her, it'll, it'll mean an awful lot. Um, and I'm very confident that she'll be back 
doing some crazy adventure um, in the very near future. So just look out for a piece of fruit running past you. Uh, you never know when you might see a, a flashing by. The principle of this award is, is to celebrate the profound positive impact that animals can have on the well-being of humans especially people who may be facing challenges due to difficult life experiences. Animals have played a significant role in the military service um, for centuries. Uh, so it's not surprising that they also play a role post-service too. And I've had plenty of service dogs with me and my soldiers in Afghanistan who have undoubtedly saved lives of uh, my soldiers and the locals that we were there to serve. And the winner of the Soldiering on Awards 2020 Animal Partnership category as voted by the public is Chris and Jet. Congratulations. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, we, we found each other and, um, you know, I, I'm sure with, with the other finalists and I'd just like to say how amazing they all are because I have read the stories and, um, you know, I'd have them all up there with me and Jet right now if I could, but animals, you know, the way me and Jet came about with each other, um, she changed, you know, the way I think about things and my walk. So yeah, it's been seriously special. The People's Choice Award was voted on this year by 5,789 individuals from across the country. Now that's a 32% <coughs> increase from 2019. Now these outstanding finalists represent the very ethos and spirit of the armed forces community. So the winner of the Soldier on Awards 2020 People's Choice category as voted for by the public is Hector Duff. My name is Norbert Camille. I've been very, very proud in the past uh, few months of, of uh, Captain Tom. I think he's done a wonderful job and I don't think I could have done any as good or better. But this is uh, a combination of all my achievements and I hope that I can continue to keep going for a little while longer and do a little bit more. Wow, wow, how inspiring and so much to take in. Uh, just absolutely phenomenal again and um, i got to stop watching these videos. I'm going to be a complete mess otherwise. <laughs> so. There's a huge amount of love coming in on, um, on the Facebook Live in the comments for Sally Orange, who was one of our winners in, uh, in one of those categories. Um, let's talk about Sally. So winner of the Inspiration Award, Sally Orange. And actually it was her sister. Sally wasn't able to come to that uh, Zoom meeting, as you probably heard, but her sister, Claire, was with us. And actually, you know, Claire was so proud and quite, she was holding back the tears to be fair. But I want to just tell you a little bit about Sally. Although Sally battles daily with her own mental illness, she has made it her crusade to raise awareness, funds and support for her colleagues through sport and physical challenges. She has completed over 50 marathons dressed as a different piece of fruit and there's loads more I can tell you about it <laughs> really but I'm going to stop I have to right I have to just tell you a little story so we actually met Sally and uh, our chair actually met Sally for the first time at Help for Heroes and uh, it was a <laughs> it was a five-day course so she actually bought the costumes and she got everybody to dress up as a piece of fruit I so Martin this. was a kiwi <laughs> and we actually sent this I've got to find you the text message we got we sent this text message and he sent it across um, to the rest of the team. And one of the team members said, and this is Sally Orange, and they said, are you taking the pip? <laughs> <laughs> I really love puns. Yeah, well, there you go. So Sally Orange, she's just beautiful. Marathon's dressed as pieces of fruit. <laughs> uh, but that's not it, is it? She's done, she's done so many she different has. physical endeavours. She has indeed. Um, so 150 miles across the Sahara, 100 miles run across a frozen lake. Um, in addition, she has swum the English Channel and cycled the length of New Zealand as a Kiwi. Remarkable, <laughs> remarkable. Um, I, I honestly feel shattered just hearing about all those physical achievements. So <laughs> congratulations, Sally and Claire for collecting it on your behalf. I know that that was a really emotional, uh, emotional thing to do. So. 
Um, let's look at the next category. And so many of their fans are leaving comments for today. Chris and Jet were the winners of the Animal Partnership Award. Um, they have so many supporters and this was a public vote. Um, so congratulations, Chris and Jet. They, um, let me tell you, Chris Lewis was in the Parachute Regiment. He um, once left, once he left the Parachute Regiment, spent 10 years raising his daughter as a single dad. And life was not easy. He reached crisis point, facing debt, homelessness, and the fear of his family being separated. He became secluded, but was helped by a number of charities, ABF the Soldiers Charity, the Airborne Forces Security Fund, and Saffa's Last Resort Fund. And when his daughter went off to college, he wanted to give back. Not just a little bit, but £100,000 was the target that he set himself. And he set off from Swansea on foot in August 2017. Jet comes into the equation in January of the following year. Um, a poorly looked after working dog. They have been inseparable ever since they met and he, they've been continuing on with the fundraising mission and have actually smashed that target of £100,000, which is so good. It is. It's so incredible. Um, and I wanted to, so to give you a little fun fact. His uh, internet was better than Helen Helliwell's. <laughs> and they are still on, on route, aren't they? They're on a coastline they somewhere. Are. They are indeed. <laughs> Amazing. Well, you know, Helen, Helen dropped out while trying to give out the awards, but Chris and Jet on a mountainside, well done. The Zoom went perfectly. Absolutely, it did. And final category? Yeah, so we've got really something quite special here. And uh, the winner of the People's Choice Award, uh, Hector Duff, as voted by the public. Happy, a very happy coincidence that Hector celebrated his 101st uh, birthday celebration on the same day as being announced as the winner. And of course, we had our ambassador for the arts, Carly Powley, sing him happy birthday. And do you know what? Hector was sat quite back and quite relaxed until Carly came on and was like, OK, I'm listening to that now. It was, <laughs> quite it was fantastic. Handy having a soprano yes. on uh, hand for a happy birthday absolutely. round Absolutely, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> and the incredible Hector Duff OBE Military Medal, British Empire Medal and the Legion of Honour founded Normandy Veterans Association branch on the Isle of Man and has been chairman of Joint Ex uh, Services Association on the island. Not to stop there, the remarkable man has worked tirelessly for decades for veteran charities and in helping World War II veterans as they become infirm. Hector is now the fini final remaining Normandy veteran on the island. And can I just give you another little fact? Uh, the public vote response was phenomenal for Hector and he received over 2,900 votes just for himself. There you go. That is remarkable. Um, that, I think that's more than half of the votes, if I'm doing the maths right, on the <laughs> on the numbers that we had before. Um, and on your 101st birthday last week, happy birthday belatedly from me, Hector. Congratulations. Um, now, we still have one more award that is yet to be announced in the Soldiering On Awards 2020. We've been reflecting on the winners that have been announced over the last four weeks, but there's the all-important Lifetime Achievement Award still to be revealed. That's coming up in a minute. And Ren, you are trading me out for a better model. <laughs> uh, well, uh, th this, uh, this other model might make me a bit more nervous because we have uh, General Richard Nugy arriving. We do. Um, General Nugy rejoins us to help give out the Lifetime Achievement Awards here on the Facebook Live. I will be back a little bit later before we say cheerio. And before we do, um, as media sponsors at BFBS, uh, we've got a little message as well ourselves. We're here in the BFBS studios doing a socially distanced um, ceremony for tonight and looking back on all the winners. And it's a great partnership to have because I feel like learning more about the Soldiering On Awards as I have been doing in the last couple of weeks, there's a lot of um, familiarity there in terms of putting your arms around the whole forces family. Um, it's very like what we do at BFBS and living and working alongside the armed forces. And it is a privilege to be sat here tonight to, to help you with hosting the awards. And we have a little message from BFBS, our director, well, can I just say something yeah. before we go into yeah. that? You know, we d we started to work with BFBS some time ago, and I am just delighted about the partnership um, and BFBS being our uh, official media partner. 
I don't think anybody else could have just pulled off uh, what we've done today. So uh, just a big thank you. And yeah, it's lovely working with you anyway. You can't see them, but there's a, lot, there's, there's a couple of people <laughs> working very hard behind these cameras as well. So we've got to say hello to them. And um, we do have a special message from BFBS Director of Academy and Creative, Adam Waters. Hi everybody, my name's Adam Waters and I'm the Director of BFBS Creative, who tonight have teamed up with the Soldering On Awards to deliver this fantastic evening. Something we're always so proud of at BFBS is seeing how the defence community comes together. Entrepreneurs, service leavers, spouses, the military themselves, and of course, the representatives from the Ministry of Defence. The Soldiering On Awards are another great example of bringing that community together. So tonight, I want to say a really big thank you to the awards for shining a light on this fantastic community. It's been so exciting to partner with the Soldiering On Awards to bring this fantastic night together. I just want to say a really well done to all the nominees and finalists, and especially everyone who's up for the Lifetime Achievement Award. And I'm really excited to see you again next year. What a lovely message from Adam Waters. And uh, again, just to reiterate, it's absolutely uh, wonderful to be here at the BFBS studios. Now, we have somebody really special um, here to do this final um, award and we of course got General Richard Nuji. Uh, we had to really work hard with his diary manager to try and get him to be here and in fact um, it was touch and go if the rehearsals would happen or not because of course the general has a very busy diary so we are delighted to have General Richard here to uh, represent Sojourn on Awards, the finalists, the judges, the sponsors, the community. So over to you, General. Well, thank you very much indeed, Brent. Uh, and uh, I've just been staggered, first of all, by um, the awards, by uh, the winners, um, uh, some extraordinary things. The, the, uh, uh, Hector Duff's 101st birthday. Um, at Sally Orange, how many marathons was that? 50-something marathons. Um, the tears as people picked up the awards. It, it, it's been absolutely stunning, actually, the effect that these awards have. But I also wanted to take this opportunity to really thank all of you. And we've got a very, very large number of people online um, watching this. Um, and um, uh, they've stayed on. Um, and and what, what my experience of these things is they, they come on and they think, oh, goodness, I'll, I'll watch the first five minutes. The figures have been completely consistent the whole way through. Um, and I, that's a real credit to Jade and to, um, to Ren yourself. So um, thank, you. Uh, thank you very much indeed for really making this something very personal, uh, but also something that has really kept the imagination going. And I'm really pleased that um, Soldiering on Awards has actually, I think it's moved into a different sphere um, by doing it this way. And I really hope that um, in future years, this will be a part of it, even if not the whole thing. I'd love to have a big party, um, but um, <laughs> it'll be a part of it uh, because actually um, what, we're, what we're doing is we're reaching people who wouldn't necessarily have been able to come and see these awards. And to do a reprise of these awards and actually see every single person winning an award again, I think is just fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, before we uh, go into um, the actual opening of the golden envelope, I just wanted to say a few words from our sponsor, Greenwich Hospital. Um, of course, they can't be here this evening, uh, social distancing um, and all of that sort of good stuff. So just a quick note um, from Greenwich Hospital. It's been a privilege of sponsoring the prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award, which recognizes and applauds individuals who have shown exceptional service and dedication to our country. We're honoured to be sponsoring this award for a second year and we are very, very proud to be part of the Sojourning On Awards. Thank you very much to Greenwich Hospital for, for that quote and we are very grateful. So I have something here for you, General for the reason for getting you here, it is a golden envelope. And in that envelope, um, we will find out who the winner is. But just a quick reminder, the um, uh, finalists, the Not Forgotten Association, Harold Payne and Emmeline Fian. So 
it's over to you. So there's a little sticky on this award <laughs> which says no peeking. Um, so um, I have no idea who's uh, won this award. What I have done is had a quick look at every single one of these three um, uh, finalists and their stories are amazing. Oh. Um, and I think... Um, yes, General, before you open that, actually, are we supposed to be doing a little video? Yes, we are. I nearly fluffed my lines. I no, you almost, did fluff I did lines. fluff my lines. <laughs> I fluffed my... I told you. Do you know, having the General here, it's just, I just get nervous. <laughs> you shouldn't. Can we see Thank the video? You. Yes, we should. We should. <laughs> The Lifetime Achievement Award, sponsored by Greenwich Hospital. And the finalists are Emlyn Fenner, Royal Air Force veteran and SAFA volunteer, Emlyn Fenner has dedicated his life to helping others. His Joining Forces program runs events with Age UK for veterans who face loneliness and isolation. Emlyn's events, which have supported over 3,000 people, include brunch and breakfast clubs, which encourage social interaction amongst veterans in Gloucestershire. Harold Payne. Harold has worked tirelessly for military charities for the past 40 years, raising over £800,000 and financially supporting an annual trip to France for Normandy veterans. He welcomes World War II reenactment societies to a three-day event, provides complimentary meals for veterans, and ensures that no veteran is forgotten. His achievements have touched both organizations and individuals alike. The Not Forgotten. The Not Forgotten epitomizes the very best of the armed forces and has served the military community for 100 years. Originally aimed at entertaining men wounded in the Great War, the charity now helps alleviate suffering through events and activities. Over the last two years, they've supported over 10,000 people, from World War II veterans to those who are still serving. The evolution of the charity and the work they do to move with the times is a remarkable example to so many. back uh yes and uh back on track i think they say so uh, we've got emlyn fina harold payne and the not forgotten as the finalists general will you now do the honors <laughs> i will and i'll just hope that the internet doesn't go down right at this moment but it would be good to be in community with helen <laughs> have we said that enough oh, i've embarrassed her enough poor helen so um the winner of the lifetime achievement award is the not forgotten <laughs> brilliant <Fantastic>. brilliant <laughs> right so we're zooming live in uh to the not forgotten and i think it is mr ray would that be right that's correct okay general over to you well many many congratulations indeed for for winning this very prestigious award T tell me a bit about the not forgotten from your perspective what what, 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 uh, what yeah what, from me i mean it's been amazing anyway i mean i'm i'm, I'm be beneficiary from the uh, not forgotten so uh, over the years uh quite a few years ago they found me when i was just going through a little bit of a tough time and um they were there when they when, they came along when I really needed them in that, in that time of my life. And uh, ever since then, I've, I've, I've been with the Not Forgotten, helping the Not Forgotten. And, it, you know, the Not Forgotten is, is, has uh, grown in size over the years, even though it's a small charity, it's a mighty charity in my eyes. It's done so much for so many people as they, you know, entertain 10,000 people every year. Uh, it's, you know, I don't know how they do it because they have such a small, a small, uh, a, a small team that uh, do so much to entertain from a 23 year old to a 100, 103 year old, which is fantastic. Um, and they never stop. Even through the lockdown, they still reached out to thousands of, of uh, veterans and, and people from the, uh, all over the place. Um, you know, we're still in the, having difficult times. They're doing outside concerts for nursing homes and things like that. 
and I can't praise the not forgotten enough. I mean, the good. What's a cherry on the cake? Because they've been going hundred years as well this year, which is even more fantastic. I, I was going to say this is this is this is your centenary year. So a hundred years of dedication to uh, serving and to veterans. There must have been hundreds of thousands of people who've been affected by the not forgotten over the last century. Absolutely. Uh, you know, from 1920 to present day, it's you know there's so many things, and and the not forgotten are obviously branching out on different things so for the older generation you know we have concerts we have tvs if they can't get out but with the younger younger generation the skiing there's a uh, white white wolf what well, took canoeing down the alps and, and things like that so there's a lot of stuff and and uh and obviously the the, the, the main um thing through the years the garden party which unfortunately didn't happen this year um due to the the pandemic but it, they're still working really hard where they're working from home they're still reaching out to everybody who, who needs them that's that's absolutely brilliant and how, how are you going to celebrate tonight and how's the not forgotten well, going to celebrate tonight i have a gin and tonic here and I'm gonna, <laughs> i want to, to join you <laughs> raise a glass to everyone who's not forgotten and every every beneficiary and obviously the soldier and on awards uh, for the the, the uh, lifetime achievement award for the not forgotten which is well deserved well, many, many, many congratulations to you and to all of the Not Forgotten team, but also to all your beneficiaries. Um, well done, and, and please keep going for another 100 years. Yes. There'll always be a need for, for, for the Not Forgotten. This is definitely for another 100 years, and thank you so much. So, John, Johnny, don't go anywhere just yet, because I've got a little bit of a story to tell. And uh, I've alluded to uh, trying to get the general to be here. And of course, we had dates to organize. And in short order, because this hasn't, you know, only two months ago, we thought we were still going to have the opportunity to meet properly. And of course, um, the nominator for uh, the Not Forgotten was General Richard Nuji. We had to keep all of that, um, you know, who had won a complete secret. Do you know how many scripts we had written? We couldn't give the right script to the general. So no wonder I almost fluffed my lines. So uh, general- so, 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 so my script <laughs> looks like that. It's had everything torn off it. Um, so I had no idea. Um, and I had no idea you'd even uh, make it to finalists. So uh, well, well done indeed. Hey, it's very well deserved. So absolutely. Much. Congratulations to you, to your organization, and also to the other finalists who do some amazing, amazing work. Um, as well as thank you so much, General. To, it was important to us that it, you were able to make it so that as the nominator, and, and nothing to do with the judging, you, keeping it a secret from you was actually quite a feat in itself because you kept asking for the script. <laughs> <laughs> Even just, yeah, okay, so who, who, which name should I be using? I was like, oh no, it'll come, it'll, it'll come, it'll come. <laughs> so congratulations again. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you. Any final words from you, General, before we resume back to uh, the uh, lovely Jade? Well, um, I, I shall get out of the way to somebody far more beautiful <laughs> and, 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 and far better at this than I. But, but I think uh, my final words would be I have been utterly inspired by all the finalists, by all the nominations that I've read um, and by, by the winners. Um, I, I, I look through the list of the winners and I can see people who I know um, uh, from my last job who who have worked incredibly hard for the benefit of the armed forces community. It's just the most amazing community where people want to help and want to make a difference for the benefit of everybody in that community. So a huge thank you to everybody who has nominated, everybody who has um, had a nomination put in on their behalf, who has become a finalist and who are the winners. It's a fantastic community. We need to keep this community going. And I think just a huge thank you from me as a previous Chief of Defence people in Defence, uh, but, but as a shortly to be veteran, I look forward to joining that community in a different guise. Ren, Brilliant. thank you very much indeed. Thank you very Marching much there. indeed. Now we have some really special thank yous from so much of the community. We couldn't get them all in, but we got as much as we could. Um, so let's get that reel rolling. It's Bear Grylls here and I just wanted to wish all of the finalists for the Soldiering On Awards an incredible evening but obviously this one is going to be at home. Uh, also I just wanted to say a special thank you to all of the armed forces community right now who are working all over the world whether deployed overseas or here at home fighting COVID-19. 
Uh, here's to you all, a massive thank you for everything you're doing. Such inspirations, you are amazing. Congratulations to all the winners and look forward to seeing you next year. Hi there, I just wanted to do a big shout out to all you Soldering On finalists. Uh, you are so important, I've even put a bit of lippy on for you, look, for the first time in eight weeks. I had a look through the finalists for this year and there's some extraordinary work that's been going on, um, as there is indeed every year. Um, the Soldering On Awards are incredibly important as they celebrate the finest among the military community. Thank you to the winners, well done. Thank you to everybody who's out there helping us at the moment, all of the essential key workers, all of the, the military people, and also hopefully, we're going to get together again. Well done, everybody. Look after yourselves. On behalf of the ACF, I'd like to say a huge congratulations to all the nominees and award winners. Have a fantastic evening. Last year's soldier and non-ceremony was absolutely amazing for me and my mum. And we're so delighted to be involved in this one this year. The award reminds us that we are truly a community, one big military family that supports, encourages and celebrates together. Hi guys, we just wanted to send a quick message to say congratulations. Congratulations to all of the finalists this year at the Soldier On Awards and congratulations to you, the Soldier On Awards, for your 10 year anniversary. Hope you guys will have a great night. Hi there, this is Jeremy Vine, just saying a quick congratulations to everyone who was a finalist or a winner or even just a, a brilliant entrant into the Soldiering On Awards 2020. I can't believe the situation we're all in, where we're all kept separate. It doesn't feel right, but let's try and make a date for 2021 because it'll be so great to all see each other face to face after this. Well done. Phew, I am so glad to be back with my sofa buddy, Jade. And uh, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Congratulations um, to John Ray. I really enjoyed watching that big reveal, especially that connection <laughs> where General Niji had actually submitted the nomination all those months ago. Yeah. Um, we've also, we've, I think John's still watching on the Zoom call. Uh, we, we have got the Not Forgotten's Award here, and it's had this very glamorous bit of sticky tape covering up the winner's name all evening so we've got it here um, and we're very sorry that you couldn't be with us this evening of course it's been a bit of a different ceremony but we've had a lot of fun and um it's been months of work for you all it has been do you get some time off before you start thinking about doing it all over um again? i'm definitely gonna ha going to have a bit of a christmas break i think uh, just to uh, down tools a little bit but there's still a lot to do we've got to get all of these uh oscars uh to uh all the individuals that have won which is going to be an amazing thing to do um but of course i love the fact that you've just taken the sticky tape back off because that's how paranoid we were that you know somebody might find out before uh, they needed to know. So yeah, it's been an incredible, um, it's been an incredible month. What can I say? I, I, if I be really honest, it's been a lot of hard work, but it's been absolutely worth it. And everybody has plugged in together. So I'm gonna sound like a broken record. Thank you very much again to BFBF. Well, it's been a pleasure to, to do this here. I know it's different than, than your normal ceremonies. Um, We've got every hope and ambition that that's, there'll be glitz and there'll be glamour next year and nominations Absolutely. will be open when? So the nominations open in January. So do watch this space. The team, the marketing team are already working on it. So uh, just to give them a little bit of a break, maybe a couple of days before we crack on with that one, uh, but they will be open in January. We have made the decision to move the actual awards ceremony till later in the year. So we're looking at the back end of September and hopefully it's gonna be a party uh, where we can all be together. And I don't know if I told you Jade, but all the finalists and winners of 2020 are invited as guests of honor for the 2020 awards so we're we all go. hoping that that can be a big party in person you've got to come it's i'd love to <laughs> yes please um it's been great fun to do this here 
The website to watch out for is soldieringon.org if, um, if you want to make a nomination. You've seen the kind of the spread of the categories that we've gone through for this evening. Looking back on the awards that have been given out, it sums up what the Soldiering On Awards do, looking after the whole armed forces family. So I'm sure there's someone in mind, in the back of your mind, that you can think of that's a worthy nominee in one of those categories. January 2021 is the date for that. And I know you've had hundreds of nominations this year and it keeps growing and growing. So good luck to everybody who's got to judge that again <laughs> next year, because that's not going to be easy. No, but worthwhile. And that's the point, isn't it? I mean, it's, you know, we've, we've talked about that already. It was important to uh, pivot and adapt and all of that sort of good stuff. But hey, our judges are resilient. <laughs> Everyone has been. And uh, the really nice comment that um, I just got told about from our Facebook Live on the comments saying this is an event that oozes positivity. Uh, that's a really nice way of summing Absolutely. it up. So thank you very much for that comment. And it really does. It's what the Soldiering On Awards are about is, um, is really celebrating those incredible achievements that we've been hearing about. Any final words before we have a very special treat to finish on? Just a big thank you to everybody. Um, and that is the whole ecosystem. Um, I am very proud to wear this uniform. And of course, uh, many people have heard me say this. Um, it's my family. It's my work family. And that means a lot to me. I hope we can all get together soon because I think that would be lovely to do that. And a um, big congratulations to all the finalists and to the winners too. And thank you to you, Jade. Oh, thank you for having me. It's <laughs> been an absolute pleasure. And um, we have one final absolute treat to say goodbye this evening. I know it's someone who's been really involved in the awards. It's been amazing for me mm. to jump in at the last minute on this last ceremony. So thank you for having me. And on behalf of BFBS for being media partners for this evening. And an incredible, incredible performance recorded, especially for tonight, that we're going to finish on. You've got Carly Powley, an amazing soprano, a classic Brit nominee and a BBC Music ambassador singing a song that we all think really sums up 2020, especially the Soldiering On Awards finale. Thank you for joining us. So it goes without saying that this has been um, an exceptional year for all of us, but I'm so proud that we at Soldiering On Awards have still been able to come together, virtually of course, but celebrate and highlight all of those incredible individuals, communities and organisations that make up our armed forces. So, of course, we have unveiled all of the winners now, but we still salute all of those finalists. Um, what a remarkable journey this has been. I think we'll certainly not forget our 10th anniversary of the Soldier Non Awards. Those of you that are familiar with the Soldiering On Awards will know that this song has always had a very special place during the ceremony. As an ambassador of the Soldiering On Awards for the past three years now, I've always performed this song during the evening. However, on this occasion it feels ever more poignant for so many reasons. Congratulations to all of the winners and finalists and I can't wait to meet you all in 2021. I shall say this so only once. Will you please say hello to the folks that I know? Tell them I won't be long. They'll be happy to know that as you saw me go. Well, oh, congratulations again. We, we would love to hear from uh, from some of the others as well. I mean, uh, Armour to Barma, I'd love to use Sort of Bar now. Still a touch of lockdown don't here in here. <laughs> don't know Of course, none of this would have been possible without the support and generosity of our amazing corporate and charity partners.
delighted to be here with you. Uh, as you know, um, I was involved at, with the Children on Awards when it first started. Keep smiling through, just as you always do. Till the blue sky is dry, the dark clouds fall away. So will you please say hello to the folks that I know? Tell them when the Soldier in on Award last year was just absolutely amazing. Um, I'm actually really proud to be passing on to you now. Take care, everyone. Look after yourselves and see you next year. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray!